What's up, everybody? My name is Brian Tripp, and welcome to an instant reaction from the Hotter Than Hell trail race. I did the 18-mile trail race at Oak Mountain State Park, put on by the Southeastern Trail Series, and check out this cool t-shirt. Pretty nice design on the t-shirts. Um, shout out to David Tosh and the entire team for putting on a really nice race. Wanted to give you guys my instant reaction. I just ran the race yesterday, Saturday, July the 20th. Um, I'm recording this Sunday, one day later. And I did pretty decent. I'm going to share my results. Um, I wanna sh I'm going to share the actual like breakdown of the course. Um, my thoughts on it, maybe some ways to um, improve it. I've never uh, raced this before. I think they've been doing it for 10 or probably more years than that. Uh, they've been doing it for a while. I've never raced it before. But uh, just going to kind of give you my thoughts and my reaction to the Hotter Than Hell trail race at Oak Mountain State Park in Birmingham, Alabama. Here we go. First, um, let me share my screen with you guys. So first off, um, here are the race results. This is an 18 mile. So they have an 18 miler and they ha also have a nine miler. I did the 18. And... I mean, some of these race results were insane. I, mean, I don't know who some of these people are, but like, let's see. They have, um, is this 2024? Yes. So they have um, a few people like coming in and setting course records or s sitting in the top 10 course records for the nine miler. Um, the 18 miler was not quite like that, even though the conditions were ideal to set a course record. It was supposed to be the hotter than hell trail race. It rained the whole entire time, practically. And it was slippery. It was muddy. It was wet. It was nasty. Trail conditions were pretty treacherous out there. Um, so it was, uh, you know, and the temps were in the high 70s, low 80s. It was, it was kind of ripe for some of these elite runners to set um, records. I don't know who James Elbert is from Huntsville, but shout out to you. Um, won the thing by, it looks like around 30 seconds, um, in front of Drew Jackson. Um, and then, you know, just going through these race results, I'm down here, I'm number 25. Um, the third oldest, I think there's a 60 year old shout out to Francois, um, running 18 miles in three thirty, And then, uh, I think there's one more, yeah, 54 year old, uh, Mr. Russell Barnes of Oxford, shout out to you guys. Um, and that was like the next oldest um, in, in that line there. But, um, it was a really good race for me. I came in at sub four hours, which is what I kind of set out to do. wanted to do that. And I was able to, but, um, those are the results. I might come back to the results here in a second, but I really want to kind of go over the actual course itself and talk about, uh, the course. Let's first, um, get into the terrain and get into the, um, the, the I guess the elevation. So, when you first start the race, you're starting over kind of, if you know anything about Oak Mountain State Park, you're past the, the main um, Oak Mountain Lake, kind of like past that, um, all the way in the very back by the South Trailhead. So you start kind of back there, and it's pretty easy going for the first little while. This looks incredibly steep. It's kind of not. I think I would say up until about right here, Till about the two mile mark this is all like incredibly runnable there there is a there is a stretch this must be that little stretch where it's this seems like it's really steep it's not that steep so what is that that's only according to this chart that looks like 700 so you'd be about right here maybe almost 800 feet and you climb to about maybe a thousand so maybe that's about 200 feet right there does that look that sound about right um that's some a little bit of climbing but over a short period of time it, it doesn't even it seems like right there it's a half mile it didn't even seem like a half mile and then from here all the way to the aid station yeah this is a, a pretty steep kind of baby climb right here but this was all runnable like all the way up to that first aid station which comes in at around mile four which is right which is about what my my watch said um, it, I got to the eight, actually that's, that, that, they told me it was 4.5, that it was a halfway point, but I knew my watch, um, hadn't even hit four yet. So that's, that's actually probably perfectly correct. So up until that first aid station, it's pretty smooth sailing. 
um, especially this beginning part where you start out on the road for just like a little bit, you go in the woods for a little bit, and then you're back out on the road, do a little baby climb. Maybe that's that road part. And then you're, you do a, a kind of a little climb where you kind of have to slow down a little bit. Then you're kind of back to trail running. And you get all the way up to the top here, and you hit that first aid station four miles in. It's like, dang, I felt real good, like real, real, real good. And, I, and I, let me set this up for, for, for me to tell you guys about, about me and why I did this race real quick. So I, a lot, as a lot of you know, I did the Pinhoti 100 um, back in November, and it really messed me up to be able to finish that race. I, I kind of had a choice, finish it and, and be messed up for a while or drop out and protect, you know, protect my legs, protect my feet. I went ahead. I'm, I'm stubborn, bullheaded. I wanted to finish the thing. I'm not a quitter. I'm going to finish. So I finished and I went to the doctor a few days later and got x-rays done. Sure enough, five stress fractures, three in my left foot, two in my right foot. And I was hobbling around for a while. I was on crutches for a little while. And it, I, I started to run again in like Jan, maybe like a month and a half later in January. And I ran a little bit, started feeling good, and then had a big setback. Give it another month, ran a little bit, had another setback. And so I kind of did that for a few months instead of staying off of it completely like I probably should have. Anyway, I'm really just now kind of in the past maybe what nine to ten weeks i've been going pretty decent for the past i don't know maybe nine weeks and but i'm still not up to about up to about just you know 30 to 35 miles a week and running so i'm really not even that back you know because i was running over 50 miles a week um, before the penalty 100 and hiking a lot getting some good elevation so i i say all that to say i i was doing this race to really kind of test to see where I was, where my feet were, are my feet completely healed? Can it handle terrain at, at high speeds? Um, if I'm doing, you know, kind of fast descents, can I, can my, can my ankles and can my feet kind of withstand that? And, and no, pro I had no problem doing the, the climbs, um, from a, from a foot standpoint. Um, so I was doing that. And then, and then secondly, I want to see where my conditioning was. And I knew my conditioning had fallen way off, taking all that time. So I still have to say when I, when I got to this, um, that first aid station, I felt phenomenal. Obviously I'm only four miles into an 18 mile race, but I felt phenomenal. Um, coming off that first aid station, it is exactly what it looks like here. It is a steep descent for, um, over a mile and, I was flying, you know, that first time through flying, I was in this huge line, this kind of conga line. I mean, I really, from the start all the way down, even through this next climb, even through this, the climb out of Pivon Falls, which is probably right here, um, up into Green Trail, which is about right here. And then you're coming down this steep descent through Green Trail. This is all Green Trail. Um, I would say until probably right as I was getting on a uh, green trail off of the red road, if you guys are familiar, um, it was just backed up. It was just backed up like crazy. I really didn't start to separate myself out from the pack and, and or be separated from and separate out from the people behind me. That really didn't happen until about six miles in, which is crazy because it was just... I, I didn't pass a lot of people, even though I could have in the beginning. I'm like, well, let's just save. Let's just save. Okay, I really want to pass this guy, but let's just save. Let's just save. Let's just, you know, it's the first lap. Let's just kind of see how things go. So coming down this, um, this steep descent right here, it was just so backed up that I'm really putting on the brakes, like more so than what I want to. Um, I really want to just kind of let that governor loose and just, just fly down this hill. And, uh, and I couldn't. And then coming up this, this next um, ascent, same thing. I mean, people are just kind of going really slow up the hill. And I do I want to pass them? I ended up passing like probably five or six people going up this hill because they were just going so slow. And then we get coming down this next little descent. And this is kind of where you're at Pivon Falls right in here. And you're kind of climbing up like this. It's just like boulder hopping. Um, like you're climbing with, you know, using, you know, you know, you're really just kind of bouldering, if that makes any sense. Um, I don't know what the technical word is, um, but you're not, you're not on really a trail. You're, you're kind of getting through these, this heavy rock section. 
And, and that's not all an ascent. That's all straight up hill. And then I start to come up this next hill, and there's a couple of people around me. And then once I finally get to the top of that hill, then I could, like, start getting away from people. And then it was right here. And then this, so right about here, this six-and-a-half-mile mark on this on this screen, right about here is where, this is where, I, you know, I go out to Oak Mountain State Park multiple times a week and have been for years. This is where Red Road, you, you intersect, the green trail intersects with the Red Road. And I'm talking, I hike this stuff at least once a week, at least once a week, if not multiple times a week. Like, I love this this part, this this uh, part of this trail system. And then coming down this steep descent green trail, that's like, I know that I, it's a steep descent, as you can see on the screen from the elevation profile. That's a steep descent, and I I just know it. I just know it like the back of my hand. I know the turns. I know the curves. I know how hard I can push. And you got to understand, too, it was raining like crazy. There was a couple of people kind of heard me coming, saw me coming, and they literally, like, got off to the side because I was absolutely destroying this part of the course. Like, I was flying. I had to have been going, you know, <laughs> running about a seven- or an eight-minute mile, like, coming down this steep, steep, steep descent. And then you kind of get down to this little, this little, um, it, 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 you go straight down and then you go straight back up. And that's a tough, I know it looks tiny right there. That's a tough little climb right there. And you get to the top here. And you kind of go through the like, little nature trail and then you kind of get back to the start. So that first, and it's not even quite nine miles. I, that, that arrow shows eight point, it looks like 8.8, 8.9. I would venture, my watch said it was more like 8.5. So, I only, I only clocked um, just shy of 17 miles total. So then you start and you do it again. Um, the second time through, no, the first time through, there's people everywhere. Second time through, I think I probably saw, I saw no one through the first mile. I got passed once, and then I passed somebody. I got back to a net zero, and then I got passed again. And then I ended up passing two people. So I was at a net positive one, and then two people ended up passing me. And that was it. That's all the people I saw the whole time on the second lap. I didn't see any other people. Folks were either way out in front of me or they were way behind me. And it was, um, it was the second time through, the, the course had become really torn up by then. You're talking about 100 and I think 150 did the nine-miler. And then you're talking about, you know, what, 80 or so people did the did the 18 mile, did the two laps. So you're talking about 250 people have already gone through there. And and it's the course was pretty torn up by then. You know, the rain kept falling. It wasn't it wasn't raining real, real hard, but it was just steady. And uh and it wasn't bad. But anyway, I made it through. Um the one thing I, I kind of learned about myself, um I did tweak a part of my right foot a little bit coming um, coming down uh, this uh, this part of the hill of, uh, coming out of the aid station. I did tweak um, the the right part of my right foot, so I had to kind of deal with that the rest of the way. Um, it's fine today, and then um, and then I was really surprised that my conditioning was as bad as it was. I mean, I, I was, I mean, I guess not surprised. I, I was thinking that um, I would be able to overcome it. I guess what was surprising is that my body felt so good. My, like, I didn't burn up my quads. My quads are ready to go. Um, you know, I didn't burn up my legs. My legs are ready to push. They're ready to climb. They're ready to really go. But I couldn't because my cardio just wasn't there. Uh, I was breathing really heavy. So my conditioning is just not there. Um, I need to, I need to really just, you know, keep working on my conditioning and uh, I need to do more sprints. Um, so I just kind of learned that about myself, but anyway, it was, it was a, that's a good elevation profile. Let me go to, um, the actual course so you guys can see this. So you're starting here, you're kind of on a road. Um, you intersect with the, uh, P vine road right here. Whoa. Okay, intersect with a P vine road right there. Let me, there we go. That's what I was looking to do. You're on the actual road, then you get back out on the trail. Um, first aid station. Oh, let's see. Oh, you're, yeah, you're on the road here, and then you get back, you're back in the trail. 
And then you go through the parking lot right here, get to the aid station. All this is heavy descent, heavy descent. And then you get into Pivon Falls here. And this is the, this is the, um, where is the green trail? South receipt. And that's another thing about this course that I learned. Um, a lot of this is like kind of like the backcountry trails, which I have no experience with. I have no experience with the backcountry trails. If you get a regular trail map from Oak Mountain State Park, none of this is in there. And I've never really done anything with these trails. I know that the Southeastern Trail Series that put on this race, they do a lot of stuff at Oak Mountain. They've got obviously Blood Rock um, in December, but they've got um, a Ridge to Blazing Ridge is coming up in August. And they utilize these um, backcountry trails, and I've just I've never, I've just never done it. But right in through here, like once you get to Green Trail, um, which I guess this is Red Road, this little dash line. I think that's Red Road, if I'm not mistaken. It's hard to see. Maybe Peavine Trail. Maybe they're no, because you weren't on Red Road that long. But I think this is more Green Trail. I don't know. I'm probably talking out of my butt right now, but this is. Um, I think this is Green Trail coming down through here and then you come off oh p they call it peavine trail okay that's interesting because you do you come off green trail and then you come through the nature trail and you cross through yeah so this peavine trail is green trail um is what they call green trail out there so but this is that part i just flew down and then you, know, you come back up but you come off once you get up this ascent right here you i usually just take this thing all the way to the parking lot, but they took you off that trail and in through the nature trail, which I've, and, and on the actual boardwalk of the nature trail, which I've done numerous times with my kids, but never seen a race go through there, which is really interesting. And then you cut back through the green trail. You're on this kind of like no man's trail. I don't even know what this trail is. And then you pop out right here and then it's back to the start. Um, you're kind of out in the pavilion area and stuff. So, Overall, you know, is is pretty good. Um, is a pretty good course. Um, I hate having to do a course twice. I hate having to do two laps. You know, I've done that with Ironman races where, um, you know, I've done Chattanooga Ironman a couple times, and the bike is you have to do two laps on the bike. You have to do two 13 mile loops on the run. So I kind of don't like that because um, you know the start of the second lap, I'm just like, okay, here we go again. Um, so, but you know, but also, you know, a little bit of that's familiarity, you get a little familiarity with you. So it's kind of a two edged sword, but it's a little boring, but going back to the race results, I mean, coming in at sub three hours is really phenomenal for these folks that did that. Um, congratulations. That's big time. And then, you know, like I said, I, you know, I really wanted to come in sub four. Um, I thought that that was doable with the weather, the way it was a little bit cooler. And, um, uh, otherwise, you know, if it was hot, 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 like it was supposed to be, or could have been, very well could have been, um, four and a half hours is probably more realistic. Um, I didn't take that much water. I should have, but I didn't. I, I found myself kind of um, out of water, not out of water, but I had to conserve water there at the very end. Um, so overall, it was a pretty good race. I'm, I'm a little, you know, here's the, um, here's the uh, medal that you get. And, um, a little disappointed they don't do age group awards. Obviously, I'm only disappointed in that because I would have gotten one because <laughs> I finished second in my age group. And usually the 40, that 40 to 49 age group is pretty competitive. But here, it it really wasn't. There was only um, you know one other person that finished um, that was in that age range. Um, so anyway... Overall, you know, I'm going to give it, um, it, it was a good race. I'm glad I did it. I learned a lot about my body. Um, obviously, I'd, I'd totally recommend it to anyone who's wanting to do a trail race. Um, I use races like this. You know, 18 miles is not, I, you know, I want to do things longer than that. I, I don't know that I'm fast, but I think that I'm I'm good and I'm better over, like, long distances, you know, because I can, my natural hiking pace is sub 15 uh, minute miles, so I, I like the longer stuff. I like the hundred milers, um, the fifty milers, and the hundred milers. I like that a lot more. And um, this was a this this felt like a race. You know, we were racing like people were running. Um, you don't really see that in those longer distance um, uh, distance ones. So it was fun. Um, if you live in this area, I highly recommend it for sure. Um, if it's hot, um, it's going to be a completely different animal. 
and and it wasn't. It was raining, and it was in the high 70s, low 80s. Um, it was humid, but not not too bad at all. So it was a good race. I recommend it. You should check it out. I'm going to put the link to all these races. They got more. The Southeastern Trail Series does more races um, throughout the uh, for the next uh, till through the end of the year. And also, I did an interview with David Tosh, who is the race director of this race and of the whole series. Did an interview with him. I'll link up that full length interview in the notes as well. But I hope this helps. See you guys next time.